Is Rick Warren a secret sodomite? Uh, well, I do believe he is. And uh, there's a number of reasons I believe that. I'm going to show you some things here. There's a good article and then a little bit of this video here. Um, but I think that the agenda, the sodomite agenda, as most of you know, uh, it's now moved into high gear because now it's a national thing that sodomite marriage is supposed to be recognized nationally. And um, I'm going to make some comments about that here in just a couple minutes. But uh, I believe that a lot of the quote-unquote Christian leaders, which Rick Warren is, most people think that he's a leader of Christianity. Of course, he's not a Christian. You know, he's not a leader of anything I'm part of or you're part of if you're a Bible-believing Christian. But um, I believe a lot of these leaders are not only just going to come out in support of sodomy. I mean, they already do. They, oh, i got friends that are sodomites, and they'll say, oh, I can't quite agree with the lifestyle, but they keep kind of backing off and backing off. But I think it's going to go even farther than that. I think that they're actually going to come out and admit to being bisexual or whatever, you know. And I think that that's what is going to be seen from Rick Warren very soon. And here you have an article. This is a good website to get onto, by the way, if you're looking for end times prophecy type of stuff. Uh, that with a Bible, you know, linking it up to the Bible, scripture verses. Now the end begins .com. Um, it says here, Apostate Pastor Rick Warren and Elton John hold hands in Congress, uh, joke about kissing each other. And, you know, there's the picture. And, I mean, I don't know which one looks more like a, an effeminate sissy, you know, of the two here. I'll put it up on screen so you can get a much better view of two disgusting individuals. But uh, you can read the article here. I'm not going to read down through it. But, um, you know, uh, it says here, after taking their seats at the witness table, the giddy pair laughed and smiled as they held hands with Warren saying amen and cautioning Elton John that if they kissed, it would be the kiss heard around the world. Okay. Yeah. Disgusting. But, um, yeah, there's, that's the one article. And I found this picture a while back. Again, I'll show you this. I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, this guy is some kind of Bone Hampton, I guess, some CCM artist or whatever. And Rick Warren's just kissing the guy, you know. And, you know, it's just, it's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. You know, and here you have this picture of, of Rick Warren at this event, this Dove Awards thing. And, I mean, the guy just, he looks very, very effeminate. Let me read you a verse of Scripture here. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Read this. Now, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Both those are kind of kick sodomy there. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so the Bible not only condemns the sin of sodomy, called by mob, the modern world homosexuality, uh, which is not a Bible term. That's why I say sodomy or sodomite. You know, and people will say, well, sodomy doesn't appear officially in the Bible. It's just sodomite or sodomites or something like this. Yes, but you can use your brain a little bit. Okay, a sodomite is guilty of sodomy. You know, some of these people. But, you know, whatever. The whole point is, it's not just uh, man with man and woman with woman, you know, that falls under that definition of sodomy. It's also the thing of being effeminate. And that, that's not an attack on women. That's an attack on men that act like women. All right? And that picture right there of Rick Warren, he is acting effeminate. All right? And that's a sin. And you say, well, then what should we do? Should we, should we execute them? Like Stephen Anderson would say, you know, that, and some of these other people that try to do this spreading this hate stuff. No, because you keep reading here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Anybody out there who's a sodomite can get saved, but their lives change afterwards. There are no saved sodomites. All right, not going to happen. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The New Testament does not give grounds for putting to death sodomites. All right now, if they're 
you know, raping people or, or doing things that are criminal, then yeah, put them to death. But just somebody who's who's got some perversion problems, right there, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, says that you can witness to that person and they, they can get saved. But they're going to be giving up their lifestyle if they get saved. The Holy Spirit's not going to be in somebody and have them continue in something that God says is very grievous and an abomination. That's just the way it is. But there's another reason why I think that Rick Warren is going to come out soon and say that he's a sodomite. Let's listen to this little clip over here. Uh, this is at this Davos uh, conference or something. Listen to what he says he's part of, if you don't know about this. Let's listen to this. And frankly, I don't care about why you do good as long as you do good. Uh, your motive may be politics. Uh, you know, I, I'm a member of the uh, uh, Council on Foreign Relations. and uh, I Okay. He's a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Now, if you don't know what the Council on Foreign Relations is, they're a globalist organization. Their symbol is a naked man riding a white horse doing the devil salute thing. And uh, he's a member of that. Now, when you get up into the high levels of these occult government types of people that are into the one world government type of thing, uh, sodomy is very, very, very popular among them. Uh, many of them are bisexual simply so that they can look like they're married men and have children and things like this. They produce offspring, but uh, they, their real desires are sodomy. And that's what I think is going on right here. But let me show you another article here quickly. The, another thing on NowTheEndBegins.com. Christians must brace themselves for the coming persecution in Obama's LGBT America. Okay, And it says here, that, I think this is very interesting, very telling. Um, Rod Dreher, writing in an article in Time magazine, has this to say about the recent U.S. Supreme Court decision on same-sex marriage. Quote, LGBT activists and their fellow travelers will be coming after social conservatives. The Supreme Court has now, in constitutional doctrine, said that homosexuality is equivalent to race. The next goal of activists will be a long-term campaign to remove tax-exempt status from dissenting religious institutions. The more immediate goal will be the shunning and persecution of dissenters within civil society. Okay? So, right there, they're going to go after the tax-exempt uh, tax you know, status type of places. Now, what are they? 501c3. What have I been saying now for a long time? The Sodomites are going to go after the Babel buildings. The Babel buildings are going to be shut down. They are pagan temples with phallic symbols on top. The steeple, it's a phallic symbol. You can see our study on the um, Independent Fundamental Baptist Catholicism. And we get into all that. We show all the proof of it. So this, is, this whole thing is going to come down very soon. Now, see, if you are part of a 501c3 church, okay, building thing there, if you're part of that, you are under laws that prohibit certain types of free speech. Okay, you can't say this and you can't say that. You can't say anything that would affect public policy. That's why you go to these places and they'll tell you, I can't tell you who to, who to vote for. See, they're, they're, they're stifled. And a lot of these guys, you know, oh, I can preach whatever I want to preach from my pulpit. <laughs> oh, not anymore. It's going down right now. Now, see, if they try to come after somebody like me, well, I'm just an individual. I'm a crazy guy behind a camera with a ministry. And my ministry is not registered with any government organization or anything. Okay? Uh, I just do what I do as, as unto the Lord. And, and we'll continue doing it, what we do until the Lord says, okay, do something else. Or the Lord allows us to be persecuted or whatever, whatever's going to happen. But the point is, they're going to come after the Babel buildings, like I've been saying. And what's going to happen, what's going to make it even worse, is when you have devils like that over there, Rick Warren, and he's going to come out and he's all of a sudden going to be sodomite or something like this. And they might even pull off a thing or two with, uh, I've even thought about this, you get a radical nut like Stephen Anderson or these Westboro Baptist people, they might, might start doing violent things to sodomites. Thereby making it, you know, then the media will spin that and make it look like, oh, you know, these King James only people are like terrorists and things like this and they hate, you know, gay people, 
you know, LGBT people, you know, they hate them and they're going to kill them and they're, they're evil and they're wicked and whatever else. Mm -hmm. That's what's coming. So there it is. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. Uh, best advice I have for, for you as a Christian, um, is just stay by the Bible. You know, I, I mean, I'm fully, uh, aware of what could happen in the future and, my simple defense to the sodomites is, uh, am I not permitted to believe this book as it stands? This book is against sodomy. Are you taking away my rights as a free man? You know, not, I'm not yoked up to the government. I'm not a government employee of an agent of the federal government as, as a leader of a 501c3 corporation. I don't have any yokes or ties to the federal government at all, you know. So are you going to try and come after me as an individual and take away my right to believe this book? Isn't that against this diversity and tolerance thing that these sodomites supposedly stand for? That's going to be my defense. And if it goes beyond that, well, the Lord's going to help me to know what to do at that point in time. That's my stand. And I am not going to back down. I'm not going to say, well, sodomy is not so bad and whatever else. And, and let me just say this, too, as far as the Babel buildings are concerned, I know what most of them are going to do. I will guarantee you. I'll give you a little prophecy of what they're going to do. Satan is too intelligent to just go in and totally shut off all Babel buildings. right? And it's not even prof prophetic either. I mean, Revelation chapter 13, the whole world is worshiping the beast. So Babel buildings have to be there. And it's interesting, too, earlier in this speech, Rick Warren says about how that, uh, you know, churches are in every village. Think about that. People get all excited about this Jade Helm thing, you know, with there's Walmarts that are shutting down and the Walmarts are military redistribution centers and blah, blah, blah. Hey, man, church buildings, you want to talk about military structures, they are federal government property if they're 501c3. And almost all of them are, you know, Church buildings are federal government property. You walk in there, they got a military ensign, the, the flag, an American flag with a gold fringe around it. That's a military flag. So you talk about military, military structures. And a lot of the pastors are on the FEMA payroll and everything. I mean, we are talking really, really bad stuff here. But I know what's going to happen. They're going to come out and they're going to say, all we're saying is Bible building pastors, well, you know, pastors, are not allowed to speak against homosexuality, the LGBT lifestyle. And if one comes to you to be married, you have to do it. Okay, you can't discriminate somebody over their sexuality. And you know what most Bible building pastors are going to say? They're going to say, can we still preach the gospel to them? Well, yes, you can preach the gospel to them. You just can't condemn them for their sin. Or you can't condemn them for their lifestyle, excuse me. And you know what the Bible building pastors are going to do? They're going to say, well, what better place for the LGBT people than to be in, in church? I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Because they're going to be looking. A lot of these, these hirelings that are out there, they have all their eggs in one basket, so to speak. They don't know anything else but being a pastor. You know, I don't recommend that any young man go out there and just, I'm going to be a, a minister of the gospel and just, all you know how to do is preach the word. I don't think that's a good idea. I think that you should learn, spend, you know, your 20s from the time you're 20 until the time you're 30, spend that time doing a lot of other jobs, construction or carpentry. I know somebody that did carpentry until he was 30 and then he started his earthly ministry. I won't mention any names, but, um, you know, get a bunch of skills so that you have something that you can fall back on if things get bad, you know. Don't just go, I'm going to just be a minister and blah, blah, blah. But a lot of these guys, that's all they do. They are, they are preachers and they just have to maintain that income. They got to have their Babel building and they got to have their income. And they got, you know, they're looking forward to retirement after all, you know, and, and everything. They're going to fall for this. And they're going to say, hey, as long as I can preach the gospel, you know, sure, they can come in. And, you know, okay, I don't, uh, you know, I can have my private beliefs. I'm just not allowed to say them from the pulpit, you know. And, you know, think about, too, let me say this in closing. What are they fighting for? They want to have state marriage license, licenses given to them from Babel buildings. Two things that the New Testament never tells you to do. So it's like 
They're fighting for things that don't even appear in Scripture. 